Hello, my name is Kiara. This next part of the webinar, I will explain the MCE hardware and the MCE system. So in this image, it's just a brief image here to show you the MCE system overview. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see we have the MCE instrument. That's what it looks like, the blue rectangular box. With the instrument comes a computer to operate the software. You also have a cell assembly, but that's not shown in this image. Here's the hardware of the MCE system. On the left-hand side, you can see that there's the MCE instrument. On the right-hand side, you have the MCE cell assembly that's completely assembled. And I'll go um, into further detail about both. Here you have the, an image of the MCE instrument. I'd like to point out and explain a few of the key hardware components of the instrument. Um, here you see there are four drip chambers. Um, buffer is delivered from the buffer reservoirs. It's kind of hard to see in this image all the way over to the right-hand side of the machine. You can see there are buffer reservoirs there. Um, buffer is delivered to the, bus, to the drip chambers um, via peristaltic pumps. There is a top pump and a bottom pump. The top pump delivers buffer to the top buffer chamber of your cell assembly, while the bottom pump delivers buffer to the bottom uh, buffer chamber of your cell assembly. There's also an optical filter cartridge. Uh, the MCE's optical system has a collimated beam of UV light that passes through an optical filter cartridge and is directed through your sample in the cuvette. The MCE instrument comes standard with a 280 nanometer filter as well as a 232 nanometer filter. And then lastly, we have electrodes on the machine. These electrodes are what supply the constant electric field across the sample chamber, um, and it's a, progr a programmable current source is used, and it ranges from femtoamps to amps. So. In this image are the different components that make up the MCE cell assembly. Um, there's also on the right-hand side the tools required to assemble all the components. Uh, the cell assembly is made up of two hex screws, two peak screws, four long metal, metal screws, buffer clamps that are made out of aluminum, buffer chambers, and you can see here there are two. The white one is the top buffer chamber, while the black one is the bottom buffer chamber. There's a cuvette holder that holds the quartz cuvette. It's a little hard to see in this image. Um, the quartz cuvette has a sample chamber in the center of it that has dimensions that are 2 millimeters by 2 millimeters by 4 millimeters, and that's where you would put your sample to be measured. This image is just to show you another view of the MCE cell assembly components and how everything goes together. Uh, it's an exploded image, so you can see how all the different components fit together. The next several images, I'm going to explain uh, the cell assembly process and the sample loading process of the MCE cell assembly. In this image, you can see that the quartz cuvette has been thoroughly cleaned and placed in the aluminum cuvette holder. Um, a single prepared membrane is placed onto the well of the cuvette. We use membranes that are made out of regenerate, regenerated cellulose. The next step is to take the black buffer chamber, which is the bottom buffer chamber. We kind of do assembly. Um, we start from the bottom and then work our way up. Um, you put the snout of the bottom buffer chamber into the well of the cuvette. And then next you take the bottom buffer clamp, put it over the, buff the buffer chamber, and attach it with all of the screws. That includes two of the metal screws, the A hex screw and A peak screw. The next step in the assembly procedure is to flip your half-assembled cell assembly over because now it's standing right side up because before it was um, upside down. And you can pipette in 20 microliters of the sample to be measured, as seen here. After you've pipetted 20 microliters of your sample, you put down your second prepared membrane, making sure that it lies flat on the cuvette. 
Then you take your second buffer chamber, the white buffer chamber, which is the top buffer chamber, and you place the snout of it as well onto the cuvette well, making sure that the electrodes and the ports are facing the same direction as the bottom buffer chamber as well. And then the last step is to take the top buffer chamber, place it over the buffer, the, I mean, sorry, the top buffer clamp, place it over the buffer chamber, and then connect it all with the screws, the remaining two long metal screws, the remaining hex screw, and the remaining peak plug. After you've assembled your, your cell assembly and loaded your sample, the next step is to prime the system. Uh, the purpose of priming the system is just to eliminate any air at, in the system because air will prevent you from applying a current or an electric field across your sample chamber. So this is what it looks like when you hook up your electrodes. The electrodes are color-coded. The white electrode goes to the white buffer chamber, the top buffer chamber, while the black electrode goes to the bottom buffer chamber, the black buffer chamber. And once everything's hooked up, that includes the tubing and the electrodes, you can place the entire assembled cell assembly into the MCE instrument, making sure that you push it all the way down into the machine. And then after you've done this whole hardware MCE cell assembly and sample loading procedure, the next step is to go ahead and set your experiment up um, using the MCE operation software.